So interesting possibility that we may be the, you would say the nexus point for renewable energy, particularly if you're trying to stabilize the output. And the idea is using the electrical output to produce alternative fuels is an ideal situation. Okay, I didn't want to take up most of your afternoon. And uh, thanks, this is the interesting possibility. We are actually talking with a company that may be interested in locating here. Uh, just because we may be able to balance their electrical load. And uh, the last feature is Marjorie asked, where is the rebuild on this plant? And we are waiting for the finance. The new market tax authority said we've made the allocation. We just need final approval. So we're just hanging, waiting for that final approval. Hey, Bob. Yeah. Uh, one comment on that map when you were showing hydrogen fueling stations. Yes. That looks really similar to the map that Tesla used when they were putting in their charging stations across the country. Yes. It's the interstate that's highway. The reasons, yeah, that's one of the reasons they selected to carry for one of their charging stations. Yes. What we are is a roughly a halfway point between Amarillo and Albuquerque. In this case, the hydrogen infrastructure made a dot on Klein's Corners and tube and carry. Well, what they told me when they were first looking at tube and carry was they tried to place those fueling stations about 110 miles apart. Okay. Because in those days, that was the range for most of the Tesla vehicles. Of course, yeah. it's expanded yeah. considerably then, but that put us in a position for that. Yeah. One of the one of the comments. And, you know, we were talking about it to EC board meeting yesterday in terms of the types of fuels and what the fuels are used for. Uh, and, and this really hit home with me with what has happened to the price of oil because of uh, the pandemic. Oil principally has been used for transportation. Right. And since we're not going anywhere these days, that's one of the reasons for the plummet in the price of oil. Right. Whereas coal and natural gas also serve for generation of electricity. So I think the uses of those fuels is really kind of interesting to look at as well. Right. And that they're switching natural gas to transportation. Uh, it's gradually going to turn into a transportation fuel. Right now, it's almost exclusive. Don't you think that there will be a bigger switch to electric than there will be to natural gas? Uh, there'll be kind of a competition going on. Uh, I mean, that's why they're sort of looking at hydrogen because somebody may say, wait a minute, you're still emitting carbon dioxide when you use natural gas. And you say, well, if I use hydrogen, I don't. Uh, uh, I got a, a mailing from the Baker Hughes people who make uh, engines and they had listed a bunch of their engines are burning hydrogen. So. Yeah. Right. And I say there's a competition going on. The fueled vehicles usually will always have a greater range. And so the idea is that your electric vehicles are okay on short ranges, but when you need range, you're going to use a fuel. And the last industry that will ever stop using oil and oil type fuels is the airline industry, simply because the, the sheer energy capacity they can get out of kerosene. That's a good point. Yeah. So it's going to be a step-by-step -step competition between different fuels and what they can, what kind of capability you can get out of them. And the price. In the end, it, it boils down to price. Uh, if you can make it for a lower price and use it at a lower price, then you'll do it. Mm -hmm. So is it also possible that you're your machinery, your 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 facility would be able to even even out the wind energy and the uh, solar energy because they can't they don't produce energy when it's when it's nighttime and sometimes it blows and sometimes right it doesn't and we're going to have something to to carry it over yeah. during those. Right. The fuel we produce can be stored essentially in the natural gas system. So the idea is use the natural gas as your storage system 
And now you can last through the weather. Essentially, you get dark, cloudless, windless days. Well, where are you going to make your energy? Well, you've got natural gas and you've got wells that you can tap as needed. So the idea is you already have the storage you need for long endurance uh, periods of time. And it counts as renewable energy. In fact, it, it counts as negative uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So that's the interesting benefit. You're gonna use the infrastructure you already have and uh, just essentially gradually blend the fuels together step by step. Yeah. yeah. And just to let you know, uh, we've got greenhouse operations almost ready at the plant. And uh, we've got uh, essentially crops being grown, vegetable garden, a big, we've, we've got roughly two acres of land in, in uh, production right now. So we're, we've established the water supply at the plant. And so we're just waiting for the big money to come. But while we're waiting, we're, we're putting in the, uh, the greenhouse grower operations. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and we do another kind of an off, uh, off out of a third base kind of a question for you. What's your reaction to Michael Moore's recent film, Planet of the Humans? Oh, uh, we I don't know. We, I've only seen I only saw like one tiny snippet of, of news <laughs> that was related to that. I, I, I can't. Planet of Humans. <laughs> I just wondered what your reaction was to it, whether you've seen it or not. Uh, it's fairly controversial, like most of his stuff is. Uh -huh. uh, but in this in this case, he's really talking about the corporate takeover of renewable energy. Oh, that's so, actually something I'm concerned about. Concern is if it is taken over like major oil companies, and maybe only a few suppliers in the world. Uh, we might be back to a kind of a, a similar scenario of price fluctuations and monopolies trying to fight it out. Well, if you get a chance to watch it, let me know what you think. Okay. Yeah. And we have a, 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 a guest with us today, uh, Marie Nava, joining yes. us. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, Marie is a farmer. And uh, we have the unusual opportunity to engage a farmer in the Rotary Club because farmers usually can't get to town. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. Yeah, thank you. Without any further comment, I think we're out of time. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> Yep, thank you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> All right, and Bye. this will be uh, posted Bye, to YouTube uh, after a little Bye. bit of discretionary Bye -bye. editing. Yeah. Does this mean we're all in the video? I, I'm not sure exactly how it works. <laughs> we're all done. Yeah. Maybe we get little pictures of everybody. Tiny little pictures, tiny little living space. Okay. So, Stopping for planet of